lose a person in this community because we know one another. It's good seeing those whom we have not seen in quite some time. It was good seeing the Pattersons come up. I didn't know who they were. And I had to ask questions. They said, well, there's this Patterson, there's Lisa, and others. Uh, Susanna, good to see that, Susanna. Amen. You know, it's good seeing them. Amen. It was good seeing uh, Colton, you know, CB, you know, Leroy, all of us. We all grew up together. Certainly, you know, Leroy, he's much older than we are, but we still say we grew up together. Amen. Uh, we certainly think about plenty upon this day. But think about your brother, your uncle, your cousin, your friend. Whatever Freddie was to any one of us, we think of Freddie upon this day. Freddie, he had come out of the prison after doing time for about eight years. And when you think about Freddie doing his young life, many of his days were spent in prison. And you think about him all over and over again. That's all that you could ever think of. But the thought should not be that Freddie is in prison. Many times there are association where that we must associate ourselves with. And whenever we meet people like Freddie, as family members, we must learn to draw closer because when they ever get caught up in a court system, but before the court system, let me say this, there are you drug pushers out there. Maybe some in here, you have a date with God at judgment, but you have helped create monsters in the hearts and in the minds of so many people. You made their life different than what it ought to be. This is why some people act the way that they act. This is why some are doing the things in which they're doing because you have clouded their mind. You have put in and instilled a drug in them, a drug that makes their balance not normal. Amen. Amen. When you think of Freddie as family, you have people like Freddie. He had come out of the prison had walked these streets for about nearly two months. Freddie had a dramatic change in his life. He was going somewhere to someone's church every Sunday for nearly two months. He came here upon three occasions. I tried to get Freddie to stay. I said, Freddie, I want to encourage you. I want to help you. I want to work with you. But we know we get into those traditional values. That sometimes we just go where we feel more comfortable at. And by the time Freddie he gets back off into the street, it is the street that destroyed him. There he meets the drug dealers again. He started staying in the street later. This time, Freddie's only thing that he would do would be just going into, breaking into funeral homes. Breaking into funeral homes. You stop to think about Freddie, and you say, what person do you know that will break into a funeral home? <laughs> On Freddie's last occasion, I just want to share something about Freddie. On his last occasion, he went into all three of them here. Henderson, Grant, and Wolf. Amen. Uh, Crawford, yeah, the Wolf, yeah, Crawford. He went to all three. Ramsacked the place. Torn papers everywhere and everything else. And Freddie, one thing about him, he was honest. If he did something, he would say he did it. You talking about self-incrimination, someone who would put them on self in a prison. You're talking about Freddie and his honesty. Because once they caught up with Freddie and they questioned him, Freddie said, I did it. I did it. Me and Freddie talked. I said, Freddie, just tell me, why do you go into prison? Home? I will lie on Freddie and I will not lie for Freddie. 
I said, Freddie, why do you go into the funeral? He said, uh, Pastor Thomas, there is a rush. Because when I first went into Grant's funeral home, he said he found like about seven or eight thousand dollars he had behind the wall in a little safe thing. And, and, and ever since then, it always gave him that rush to go back and to just look to see if he could find any more money. But every time we in the community heard that Freddie was going into these funeral homes, that was a red flag right there to say that something is wrong with Freddie. There should have been some family concern where that you get together as a family, you make sure that when they go to court, you go and you watch these courts, you watch these judges, you watch these judicial systems. Because so many of our people are caught up into these system where that they cannot get out and they cannot get out themselves. But we must make sure that these courts are handling them right. Freddie didn't deserve to be in no prison. Freddie did not deserve to die in no prison. Freddie's life should have been in some kind of mis mental institution where that he was receiving drug medication that would help his balance and help restore him. And he should have been monitored and carefully watched by them. But when the system threw him away, I take him Freddie to court on his last freedom. The judge ordered during the time of the sentencing, he said, I will give you 15 years. And I looked at Freddie, and I just shook my head. And I'm knowing that he was caught up in a system where that he could not bring Freddie was just like he was on some kind of a roller coaster that many of us seem to just be on. And it, it's just so hard to get off of it. You hope somebody can just stop it from spinning, that you can get off. So Freddie, he found himself. I said, Freddie, you went first of all before the hardest judge there is. He's one of the hardest judges. I said, Freddie, I hate that he gave you 15 years. He said, Pastor Thomas, I needed that. He said, I can do it. I can do it. I said, Fred, I hope that you come back being a better person. That you can get out of these streets and that you can quit going to these dealers and that you can just find a way to help yourself. Sometimes that's all of us need is just time away from others. Even if it's moving off at a distance and we hook up with the same people, then we're getting in the same trouble. That's all Fred needed. He needed to distance himself. He knew that he could make it, but time ran out. One day time is gonna run out on us as we draw a conclusion. You read Psalm chapter 90. The old psalmist writer wrote, he said, Lord, teach us, teach us to number our days that we might apply our heart unto understanding. We must understand that we don't have long down here. Amen. He said, our life, in that same chapter of Psalm, chapter 90, he said, our lives are told as a tale that is told. People are gonna tell our life story one day. There'll be things that we will share with others that we will not share with no one else. When the time comes, they're going to be upon one of these same stages and they're going to be talking about you. They're going to be talking about you. They're going to be talking about you. They're going to talk about me. But let these things be the truth. Let them be rightly spoken of. Remember the man in St. Mark chapter 5. He had been out in the graveyard, in the cemetery. There he was out there day and night crying and cutting himself with stones and just cutting himself up. No one could tame him. People tried to help him. They went out there with chains and they put on him. They went out there with ropes and they tied him up and they brought him back into the city. He would break these things like nothing. He would go back into the graveyard, into the mountains and all of this, and he would be crying in the night, terrorizing the people. 
one day Jesus came. He came into the city of the Gadareans. The Bible said when Jesus walked in there, that same man that the people knew as being crazy, he ran out to meet Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, who are you? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Legion, you're many. People that we sometimes call crazy, they got more sense than what we got. They'll go up and talk to the Lord before we go and talk to him. Now you turn around and tell me who got the most sense. <laughs> Amen. Fred <laughs> would go. He would make his attempt trying to make his life right, trying to get his life better. So many of us, so many of you, even those of you on the outside, you don't even come. You don't even come near the sanctuary of worship. If you're not a Christian, you need to be. You say, what must I do to be saved? You must hear the gospel of God, Romans 10, 17. So then faith come by hearing. Hearing come by the word of God. You must believe it after hearing it. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that is coming to God, he must first of all believe that God is. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must repent of your sin. You say, what is repenting? Repenting is giving up whatever is stopping us from being right with God. Luke 13, 